to you and peace be multiplied to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What's going on, Beacon Hill? How y'all doing this morning? <laughs> yes, hey, I'm used to the clapping going on right now, so it's a little bit different for me. But hey, thanks for joining us for worship this morning. I, I wish dearly that we could be gathered together as a body of believers in person, um, but this is a time where we just can't do that. And so um, I miss y'all dearly, but I am beyond thankful that we have technology today that allows us to still have worship and worship together in spirit and truth. So I trust that you've enjoyed worship so far this morning. Um, through music, and we're going to get to the Word here in just a minute. But I want to give you some updates of some things that are happening in our church. Uh, just because we can't meet together corporately right now doesn't mean we're going to stop growing in the Word and stop being in community. This week, we will have community groups that will be in all um, of our community groups will be live. So that will be on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, on Thursday night and on Sunday morning, we will have our community groups. And so that will be something that you want to check out too. If you want to dive deeper into the Word of God, then you make sure that you send us a message and you will get plugged in to one of our community groups. I, I think during this time, it's a time that we need to seek Jesus more than ever. And so if you're a guest with us today, I want you to know that um, we thank you for tuning in. And something that's uh, very important for us is that we are always being the church, regardless of the circumstances, right? And so something that you may not know about our church is that on any given Sunday, we will have between 20 and 40 people show up that, that need some type of meal assistance. They might be the only meal that they get that day. Uh, and, and so we didn't want to stop doing that just because we cannot meet physically together. And so I want you to know right now, as I am speaking, we have a team that is on their way to the Beacon Theater right now, and they are setting up outside, they're setting up tables, and they are going to feed anybody who needs a meal today, and man, those ladies can cook. We have spaghetti, meat sauce, bread, salad, dessert, and I am beyond thankful for those people who are just pouring in to our community, and they are not stopping being the church. And so I think it's important that we understand that while we must be smart in this season that we are in, we must also not live in fear. Because fear is not of God. Fear is of the devil. And so we have a saying at Beacon Hill that some rely on Fox News or CNN, but we rely on Jesus Christ. And he is the only one that we should count on during this time. And so, man, we are so blessed for so many people's partnership in the gospel. And I really believe that in this season that we're in, people need the church to be the church more than ever. They need to see people who are authentic Christian lives, who are stepping up and trusting in Jesus through it all. And so I, I hope that through this season that God is glorified, and I pray that more people come to know him than ever before. And I think that can happen as we continue to shine the light of Christ brightly wherever we are, whether or not it's through social media or handing out and being missional church and taking care of those in need, we will not stop being the church just because of COVID-19. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I feel like I'm already preaching, and so it is preaching time. And so if you would, go ahead and grab your Bibles and open them up with me to Luke chapter 11, verse 4. Luke chapter 11, verse 4 will be our focal text this morning. Also, if you would like a copy of today's sermon manuscript, man, just write your email address in the comment section of our Facebook page or send us a private message with your email address and we will make sure that you get a copy of today's sermon manuscript. So before I dive into the word this morning, I want you to know just a little bit about where we are uh, studying in a church. Um, about five weeks ago, God just moved to me just to, to stop going through the book of Romans and to start preparing our church for a season of prayer. We didn't know at that time that we would need to be on our knees in prayer more than ever, but God did. And so I'm so thankful that we have been spending this season learning about the Lord's Prayer. Last week, I took a break from the Lord's Prayer to talk about anxiety because I think a lot of us were just really freaking out last week and probably a lot of us are this week as well. And so if that's you, go back online and, and look on our YouTube and Facebook channel and check out that sermon about 
uh, not being anxious about anything, but in everything being to petition to the Lord in prayer. But other than that, we've been going through prayer and the Lord's Prayer specifically over the last couple of weeks. And I think it is something that we need more than ever. Matter of fact, Charles Spurgeon, who is the Prince of Preachers, uh, he actually said that I would rather teach one person to pray than ten to preach. That just shows you how important prayer is in our lives. I was doing some research this week, and sadly, do you know that the typical Christian, the typical Christian spends a maximum of one minute a day in prayer. One minute a day in prayer. And so I looked, I said, well, did they did research on pastors as well? And they said, yeah, the typical pastor spends less than five minutes a day in prayer. And so I said to myself, is it any wonder why the church is so lukewarm in America? I mean, because we're not spending time in prayer with the one who can handle it all. Why, when we go to something like COVID-19, everyone runs to panic instead to run to Jesus Christ who can handle everything. And so I really think that we need to get back to really praying. I think Dwight L. Moody, he, he gave a gut punch when he said it like this. He said that uh, we can handle times of affliction better than we can times of prosperity. Because in times of prosperity, we tend to forget God. I would imagine that many of us here today that are watching online are spending more time in prayer than we ever have because we realize that we need God now more than ever. And so it is my prayer that when this season passes, and trust me, church, it will pass, I pray that we will not give up seeking God in prayer because in prayer we can come and talk to God about anything, anywhere, at any time. And so I want us to really dig deep into this topic of prayer. When you look at Luke chapter 11, uh, one of Jesus' disciples came up and he said, uh, after he prayed, and he could have asked Jesus anything. You ever thought about what you would ask Jesus? Like, what would you ask him to teach you if you could have just a one-on-one -on -one session with Jesus? And by the way, that is awesome. And in case you're new to the faith, you can really have a one-on-one -on -one session with God anytime, and that's through prayer. But this disciple came up and he said, Jesus, would you teach us to pray? Would you teach us to pray as John had taught his disciples to pray? They could have asked Jesus to teach them anything. And they said, teach us to pray. And so as a church, we have been studying what it's like to learn how to pray. And as we walk through the Lord's Prayer in Luke chapter 11, we have sat there and learned about how to pray about kingdom-minded things, about how to pray in God's will, about how to pray for our daily needs, uh, about how to confess our own sins and to, to cleanse our heart on a daily basis. And quite frankly, as I'm speaking to you this morning, if we would just spend time focusing on kingdom-minded prayer through this season that we're in, that, that, that God's glory will be revealed, that, that people would come to know him. What we are going through right now would be so worth it if people would come to know Jesus Christ as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Church. May God's will be done through this season. And I know that his will will be done and more people will come to know him. So today we're going to talk about a topic of prayer in Luke chapter 11. That is a tough one. And so I wanted us to get back to normalcy as much as possible and just to keep on doing what we're doing. And so we are going to talk about this thing called forgiving others. Permit me to label the message this morning, Forgiven People Forgive. Let me read Luke chapter 11, verse 4, and then offer a word of prayer, and then I'm going to make a beeline to the cross. The word of God says, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone in debt to us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I thank you for the blessing to be able to sit here and just 
preach your word this morning. I thank you for the beautiful worship that we've had already. Lord, I thank you that we're able to be here together in any means just to worship you and just to dig deeper. And so, Lord, as we dig into this topic this morning, I pray that you would just speak to our hearts. Lord, you would convict our hearts. May, may the Spirit just work through me as I proclaim your word. May I decrease and you increase and you get all the glory. Lord, I pray that if someone is listening online today that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation for them. Lord, I pray that if someone is bottling up this, this hate, this division, this, this something that they're not really forgiving somebody, Lord, I pray that they would deal with that today, Lord, as this message just unlocks this truth. Lord, this is for you and all about you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all, forgiveness is tough, right? We, we all like to talk the talk, but it's harder to walk the walk. A lot of us will say that, man, I've, I've buried that hatchet, but in the reality, we keep the handle out for immediate use, amen? Now, we sit there and, and, and we say we like to forget, but it is so tough. And so I, I, I've got news for you, church. Forgiveness is not an option. Forgiveness is a command that Christ calls us to do. When you really want to grow closer to Christ, you will realize that forgiving others would be a natural part of the Christian walk. Look, Corey Ten Boom found this out the hard way. This is a lady who talked about forgiving others. She was a godly woman, but she found it out the hard way. In World War II, um, her family was hiding and saving Jews from, 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 from people that would take them off to concentration camp. And so they were doing this by hiding them in the attic of, of their house. But it wasn't um, long before a Nazi officer came and, and, and they found them. And, and they took Corey and their family off to prison. Then they took Corey off to a political concentration camp. And then lastly, they took Corey off to death camp where we... She was facing certain death. She had been through so much mental and physical pain. And then miraculously, God delivered her from that. And y'all, I I wish I could tell you that that was the end of the story. But when she got back to church, one day she was in church and this man started walking over to her. This man didn't recognize her, but she recognized him. This was one of her prison guards in concentration camp. This was a person that had put so much emotional, physical pain on Corey. They had uh, abused her, and this man was walking up to her, extending his hand, welcoming her to church. Can you imagine just the emotions that were going through Corey's mind right then? Just the, just the stuff that started pouring back up. I mean, she had talked about forgiveness. She had told others that she had the forgiveness. But now she was going to have to put up or shut up. And what Corey realized that on her own power, she couldn't possibly forgive this man for what he had done. She knew that she was going to have to dig in to the power of Christ living within her to be able to forgive this man. It was only because the love of God that was in her that she was able to bestow that love on this man, even when he didn't deserve it. God gave Corey the strength to do this. So I don't know what type of burden you are facing today, what type of grudge you are holding. Maybe you have never been something that intense in your life as Corey went through. But many of us in our life have been through seasons of hurt, been through seasons of pain. And there will be times in your life where you will need to seek forgiveness and you will need to offer forgiveness. It's in those times that I want you to look to God for the strength to be able to forgive others. This morning, I want to talk to you about forgiving others through prayer. My first point is God teaches us how to forgive. Man, many of us have been hurt by others, amen? Man, we we face this battle. I know in my years as a pastor, I... I have been hurt by by many people. 
I know a lot of us think, Pastor, it's so easy. You know, we just get up. We only have to work 30 minutes a week. But, you know, it's, it's a lot of pain sometimes being a pastor. And then sometimes we have to just counsel with other people. And, and, and I've heard more hurt in my life. I've seen more hurt. I, I've seen people that have had to deal with so much immense pain. And so I'm not here today to tell you that forgiveness is easy. I'm just here today to tell you that forgiveness is necessary. So I pray that through this simple passage, we're able to open up our hearts and start to stir in us a desire to forgive others where we can and where it's possible. Because the reality of it is, some of us today, we, we, we have this so much hatred in our lives. You, you are sitting there and you're thinking of somebody that you may not think deserves to be forgiven. And if that is you this morning, I encourage you to get up right now and go look in the mirror. And you will see someone who doesn't deserve to be forgiven. But Jesus Christ found you worthy anyways. We have to look no further to the cross to see someone who offered forgiveness even when we did not deserve it. See, the Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ says that we were all once enemies of the cross. We were only reconciled through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Look, that, my friends, is the best example I know how of how to restore a relationship to look to the cross of Jesus Christ. You have to look to God and not to self. God teaches us how to forgive others through his son's shed blood on the cross of Calvary. Look, Jesus was denied by one of his own. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was crucified. As he was dying, the soldiers were casting out his clothes, playing a game of lots. And yet, when Jesus was about to take his last breath, he looked up to the Father and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. If you truly know, if you truly know what it's like to be forgiven, you should have a heart that is working in you to offer that forgiveness to others. See, too often we make forgiveness a one-way street. We want God to forgive us for everything, but we won't forgive others for anything. So may I suggest to you this morning that when you realize that we all fall short of the glory of God, that each and every single one of us are jacked up. We do things every day that we hate, that we wish we wouldn't do. When we realize that, that Christ forgave us, then we can start to work in our hearts to start having a heart and an attitude to forgive others. See, the first part of verse 4 is going to God in confession to, to cleanse our own sins. See, David said in Psalm 51.10, He cried out to the Lord to create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, I pray in this season that we're learning how to pray. That I pray that God would renew our hearts, would cleanse our souls, and create a spirit of forgiveness within each of us. Because here's the deal. The next part is really going to step on your toes. God does not discriminate on who he offers forgiveness to, and neither should you. That part stepped on my toes this morning. If it was nobody else, it was preached for me. Look with me back at verse 4. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone. Look, I've got lots of degrees. I've been in school for 10 years, so let me tell you what the Greek means for everyone. It means everyone, church. Look, you don't get to pick and choose 
who you forgive. When I read John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It doesn't pick and choose. It says anybody who believes in him shall receive the forgiveness that is offered through him, church. Look. That doesn't mean that everyone is going to receive God's forgiveness. But that means God's forgiveness is available to everyone. See, that's the key here. This present tense that we're talking about. That the believer should always be ready and willing to forgive others. Whether or not they receive it is not up to you. You have to have the heart and the attitude to offer forgiveness to others. See, this part can be very painful. Man, I encourage you. If you've never checked out our Celebrate Recovery, which also will be going virtual soon, um, may I, I encourage you to check out our Celebrate Recovery. There literally is um, step studies and there's, there's sessions on just dealing with forgiveness. But one of the things that maybe I can just touch on for a second is they talk about doing an inventory, like writing down. And yes, there's, there's, a, there's a part where those who have hurt you, but in dealing with today's topic of just writing down people that you may have offended, you may have hurt, and literally just start to, to release that bondage, right? Just to start to release that in, in your, your own heart. And this is when prayer really gets personal. This is when really prayer gets, because there's a lot of pain that is brought up. But I'm telling you, you will not be set free you will not be let go. You will not be the, the person in Christ that God called you to be unless you really put into practice this thing called forgiving others. This is what God wants for you. He desires for you. And, and your heart just starts to pour open this attitude of forgiveness. And so when you look at the Lord's Prayer, man, we can sit there and we can pray about kingdom-minded stuff. We can learn how to do that. We can learn how to pray in God's will. We, we can learn right now, man, we're praying for God to provide every day, especially toilet paper, among other things. We're, we're praying for God to provide. We're asking God to forgive us our sins. But when we really get personal in prayer, and ask God to help us forgive others, that's when it gets real. And I believe that we need this more than ever. I believe that we need this more than ever, church, because here's the reality. This church has seen so many people get reconciled because of the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. There are people that have experienced so much hurt. And when I look at it in the world today, what do y'all see? Do y'all see so much bitterness? Do y'all see so much hurt? Do you see so much pain? And so maybe the church can be the church right now. Maybe the church can just, just sit there and be the one that, that says, look, I want to offer forgiveness to others. I want to restore. Maybe this is a season where you can just come and you can be reconciled with people. You can see relationships be restored and Christ will be glorified through it all. Look, lastly this morning, our desire through this all should be that we look more like Jesus. You know what happens when you seek Jesus in forgiving others? Your focus becomes more on godliness and less on worldliness. So when you do that, you become more like him. I want to read 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Look, and I don't know about you, but I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like Jesus today than I was yesterday. I want to grow to be more like Jesus in everything that I do. So when I read 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. You see, church, when we are truly trying to look more like Jesus, we realize that even the greatest hurt that you are going through or have been through in your life is only temporary. See, Revelation says there will be a season where, where he will wipe away every tear. He will wipe away every hurt. And for Christians, we know that the pain that we face in this world, the things that we go through, they're only temporary because there will be a day where we will be together and we will worship Jesus Christ forever and ever and we will just worship him in spirit and truth and it will be the best day of our lives and it will never end. We'll be able to worship him forever. And I don't know about you, but I long for that day more than ever right now. 
So when I ask you this, when you look at other people, when you look at people who are in pain, the most important thing is not that you win the battle, but that they know Jesus Christ is Lord of their lives. And so if that means that you need to make the first step in offering forgiveness, and maybe through that all, that they come to, to start to ask questions about how was this possible for you? How was it possible for you to come and do this? You can say, let me tell you about my best friend and his name is Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, we're going to have a tab of invitation. The band is coming up right now and we are going to worship through invitation. If you've got a struggle that is dealing with in your life, you've got a hurt, a habit, a hiccup, anything that's going on in your life, I pray that you lay it down at the feet of Jesus. The band's going to play one last song of invitation. I'm going to go back to the computer. And if you have a, a prayer request that I can pray for you today, please send a message and let me pray for you. Maybe you've got a burden that you're hanging on to. I just want you to give that to God today in prayer. If you've never turned your life over to Jesus, I want you to know that that forgiveness is available to you. You may think that what you have done in your life could never be forgiven. And I'm here today to tell you that his grace is sufficient. You just have to give your life to him. I'm going to pray and then I'm going to ask you to respond however God's leading you today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you for your word. I thank you for the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to change lives. Lord, I thank you for forgiving us. Lord, those who know you realize the power of forgiveness. And so, Lord, I pray today um, that we would, we would just remember that. And Lord, when your word tells us to forgive others, Lord, we have to look no further back at the day that we came to know you, that the day that we were set free, to muster up the strength and the courage to be able to have a heart towards learning how to forgive others as well. And so, Lord, I pray that you are glorified today. In Jesus' name.